the January 27th, 2022 meeting of the Parker Planning Commission to order at 7 p.m. Would you please stand and join us for the Pledge of Allegiance? Thank you. Absent is Eric. Seated for Eric is Roxy. Uh, absent is Ruthann. Seated for Ruthann is Nick. And absent is Abbas. All right. Are there any additions to or deletions from the agenda? Uh, no, sir, there are not. Uh, the, the minutes. Do we have any additions or corrections? Uh, deletions from the minutes from the January 13th meeting. Do we have a motion to approve? I motion to approve the Planning Commission meeting minutes for the 13th of January 2022. I'll second. Been moved by Ileana, seconded by Rich that we approve the minutes. Uh, from the January 13th, 2022 meeting, and I will call the question. Kim. Aye. Uh, 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 Ileana. Aye. Uh, uh, Nick. Aye. Uh, Rich. Aye. Roxy. Aye. Chair is aye. Passes unanimously. We haven't done that in a while. <laughs> All right, uh, our first item, 6A, is a public hearing on the Chamber's High Point Filing Number 1 Minor Development Plat, and we will open that public hearing at 7.02. And Stacy, we're all yours. All right, good evening, Chairman and Planning Commission members. So this evening, the applicant is requesting a minor development plat, which will subdivide the 44.35 acre property located at the southwest corner of E470 in Chambers Road into three lots, six tracks, and create the future Belford Avenue right of way. Next slide. Oh, good. The site is located at the southwest corner of Chambers Road in E470. The subject area is bounded on the north by E470 and to the east by Chambers Road. To the west is the Com Park Village South plan development, which allows for a mix of residential and commercial uses and is currently under construction. And to the south is the Grandview Estates large lot residential subdivision within the unincorporated Douglas County. So the property was annexed into the town on June 20th, 2016, as part of the Chambers High Point plan development. The Chambers High Point plan development allows for a mix of multifamily residential south of Belford Avenue and commercial uses north of Bel Belford Avenue. The proposed minor development plat proposes three lots and six tracks to create the infrastructure and super block lots in support of the zoning. Lot one is 11.22 acres in size and is located within planning area A for multifamily uses. This is also south of Belford Avenue. Lot two is 3.615 acres in size and is located within planning area B for office light industrial uses north of Belford Avenue. And lot three is 9.73 acres in size and located within planning area C for highway commercial uses. As required by the Chambers High Point Annexation Agreement, a 6.82 acre community separation buffer is required along the western and southern portions of the development. The community separation buffer is proposed to be platted as tract A and is represented by the green area on the attached map. The development will be responsible for the construction of Belford Avenue from Chambers Road West to connect with Belford Avenue within the Compark Village South development. Each lot proposed within the development will be accessed off of Belford Avenue through access points determined and approved through either future plats or future site plans. Pursuant to the Chambers High Point Annexation Agreement, the development is required to provide 7.82 acres of open space. The applicant is proposing a total of 13.974 acres of open space that will consist of the 6.82 acres located south of Belford Avenue as part of the community separation buffer 
and 7.175 acres north of Belford Avenue along Happy Canyon Creek. All additional requirements, including building setbacks, architecture, landscaping, uses, design, will all be reviewed at the time of future site plan applications. So staff has reviewed the proposal and has determined that the project is consistent with the master plan. All platting requirements of the Chambers High Point Plan Development and the Land Development Ordinance have been satisfied. The proposal provides adequate access, infrastructure, drainage facilities, and design considerations. Utility providers have confirmed capacity and availability. All referral agency comments have been addressed, and all public notice requirements have been satisfied. Therefore, staff is recommending that the Planning Commission recommend Town Council approve the Chambers High Point Valley Number no. 1 Minor Development Plat. This concludes the staff's presentation. The applicant's representative, Rick Rome, is here tonight and is available to answer any questions that you may have. And that is it. Okay. Thank you, Stacy. Questions for Stacy or the applicant? Um, Stacy, I have a quick one. Can you go back to the staff recommendation slide? Price. <clears throat> I guess I can find it in my bag. Well, I guess any of those last three slides. So <clears throat> track day, and it kind of makes that basically a, a, a loop. W right there where you've got that cursor, why does it end there? And why does it not come around Belford Avenue? Uh, Belford Avenue? Are those lots, are there lots right there? And are th will they not be buffered? I got to get a closer view. So that is an additional tract that ends right there at Belford Avenue. And that is um, just, it's an additional open space tract. And I want to say the applicant's creating that for, um, and I might have him come up. Hi, so answer. not that. the microphone. Just give us your name and address for the record, please. Yes, my name is Rick Rome. I'm with IMEG Corporation, and we're at 7600 um, East Orchard Road, Suite 250 South, in the Harlow Plaza. And so the track that you're pointing to, that's actually a, an IREA easement, and there's a, a well easement there as well. So what it is, it's really for utilities. We're going to provide some landscaping in there. I believe, Stacey, the landscape plan identifies uh, some sort of enhanced monumentation or land, enhanced landscaping in that track to help sort of create that space between the Algonquin Acres to the south, the uh, multifamily side on Lot 1, and creates that visual separation along Belford. So it is it is a separation area. So I I guess my question is why doesn't that tract why doesn't that tract A come out then from there to Chambers Road? Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh. I, yes. So and it's really hard for me to pick this. So directly south of there kind of where the cursor is right now. What's south of there is an Arapaho water and wastewater reservoir. Is that the facility? reservoir? Yes. Okay. So so it's not it's there. It's buffered yeah. anyway. <laughs> yes. And okay. so that's the reservoir. <laughs> then you have the Grandview Estates. Um, Belford's going to be the very northern portion. So it okay. touches that, yes, Okay. portion of the property. Sorry. No, that's fine. And as of the time we had the packet, there were no comments. I saw there were no comments from the HOA, and there's still no comments from the uh, large um, homes or the, the large acre homes back there? So Grandview Estates has been involved. Um, I've talked to their HOA manager multiple times. They didn't submit formal comments. Their main concern is to make sure that community separation buffer remains um, in place along that property, which it is track day and it is a requirement of the annexation agreement. Okay. Other questions? No. No? no? Okay. So we will... Uh, since this is a public hearing, uh, we will open the discussion to public comment. Uh, if you are currently on the Zoom app, use the raise your hand feature to indicate uh, that you wish to comment on this item before us. Do we have any hands raised, Bryce? There are no hands raised. Okay. Uh, we will close the public comment. 
Uh, do we need any further information? No. No? no. Okay. We will close the public hearing at 7.10. And planning commissioner discussion. I have the same question my fellow commissioner had when it was answered, and I understand the concerns with regards to the buffers and the and being able to keep it separate. So that's done. I'm in agreement. As long as, as long as everything was met, and um, yeah, it's a high traffic area, so I think it'll fit well there. So I have no problem with that. Yeah, I have no concerns about the proposal. Any time frame on construction? Rick Rome again. And we have just gone through the bid process. We received bids on the 25th of January. We are pending award of the contract until after the town council hearing, just to make sure that we're not engaging in a contract without an entitlement for the, for the property. Uh, and as soon as we get our as soon as we get that entitlement, we will be moving dirt and anticipate completion of the roadway by the end of this summer. Great. Thank you, Rick. Thank you. Uh, I agree with my fellow commissioners. I, it's, uh, it met the needs, I recall, from the neighbors in Grandview Estates, you know, when this first came up and was annexed, and it seems to be following through on that, and, and that's what we like to see. Uh, so do we have a motion? I move the Planning Commission recommend Town Council approve the Chamber's High Point Filing Number One Minor Development Plan. I'll second. It's been moved by Rich, seconded by Nick. The Planning Commission recommend Town Council approve the Chamber's High Point Filing Number One Minor Development Plan. I will call the question again. Kim? Aye. Uh, Ileana? Aye. Nick? Aye. Uh, Rich? Aye. Roxy? Aye. Chair as I passes unanimously. All right. Next item is a public meeting uh, for a bill for an ordinance to amend Title 13 of the Parker Municipal Code relating to family child care homes. We will open this hearing at 7:12. And Bryce, we're ready for you. All right. Thank you, Chair. Members of the Planning Commission, as noted before you tonight is a proposed ordinance regarding family child care homes. Next slide, please. So a little bit of background. In 2021, uh, the state legislature um, approved new legislation um, requiring that family child care homes be classified as residences for purpose, purposes of local zoning regulations. Um, the legislation as it was described was, uh, the purpose was to align local government governing authority regulations to expand opportunities to access child care in family child care homes. Uh, town code currently allows family child care homes as home occupations up to six unrelated children. Next slide. In order to comply with the statute, we have a proposed ordinance before you tonight that amends our code. A um, few things it does, it defines a family child care home as being located in a home and providing less than 24 hour care for six unrelated children under the age of 18. Family child care homes are moving from a being a home occupation to just being a use by right. So it is a use by right in all residential zone districts, including PDs uh, with residential uses. It also defines large family care, uh, family child care homes as being, again, located in a home, providing 24 hour care, but for seven to 12 children. Uh, the new code uh, requirement will be for these large child care homes, a conditional use uh, a review will be required for the second home that's next to each other. So the first home is used by right. When the second home immediately next to it comes in, a conditional use is required. Um, and that conditional use is located or is uh, limited to just traffic and parking issues. This is all reflective of the state statute. Next slide. So staff recommends, the Planning Commission recommend that Town Council approve an ordinance 
regarding amending the land development ordinance um, regarding family child care homes and large family child care homes to align with the approved uh, state statutes. As always, I'm available for any questions you may have. Questions for Bryce? No. <clears throat> nope. I have a quick question. Bryce, when I was reading this and sort of <clears throat> familiarizing myself, is there a recommended square footage when you go above the 7 to 12 to house the children? So that's um, actually driven by, driven by state statute and state um, uh, criteria for approval. So when we look at it, we're going to be looking at the state licensure. Um, we're not going to be in the, um, at the level of, of the square footage because the state will be reviewing that. So they'll come to us with whatever license it is. And, and actually, to be a, a little more transparent, we won't be reviewing the licenses because it's a use by right. Another so question? Explain to me why one home gets use by right and the second one doesn't. Yes. That's a good question. <laughs> um, that's the way the state statues, statute is set up. Um, I agree that it, it's not exactly the best policy to say you're, you're the second one in, so therefore you have a conditional use permit. But that's the way the state legislature has set it up, and so that's why our code is reflecting that. So the large family daycare home that comes in is allowed, but if somebody wants to open one immediately adjacent on either side of it, they then have to go through a conditional use permit. So would the town consider not doing, not following the state statutes on that second, basically that second point and just saying it's a use by special, re or it's a use by right? So, uh, I mean, for, for coming from staff, I, I would never recommend that we not follow state statute. Can I ask why? Why? Uh, because state statute, um, we, we, are, we are subject, even though we're home rule, there are um, state statutes um, of state interest, and this is one of them, and so we are required to follow these state statutes. So if we don't pass this by state statute, we don't pass it. Is that what, you, I, I, is that what I'm hearing? So, so, so if, if, we, if we don't pass it, we wouldn't be in compliance with the state statute. And we have to be in compliance with the state statute? That's... That's that's the state statute is law. Even <clears throat> I'm sorry to interrupt. Even though we're a home rule, I think you mentioned that. Yep. Community. So, so certain things are, are home rule. Certain things are st are statewide interest. Okay. Um, this is of a, a statute of statewide interest. Yep. Would there be a situation where the second home would not get? the child care facility? That wouldn't get approved? Um, so the conditional use permit requires that um, that can be reviewed for parking and traffic, and it would go before Planning Commission and Town Council. But those would be the only two criteria that the state statute allows to be considered. Other questions? Are there any situations now in town like that? No, not that we're aware of. There are 17 uh, daycare homes, child daycare homes in town. Um, I'm not aware of any that are next to each other. Quick question. Are the, so this would be large family child care homes, are they registered then? Each one that is in operation is registered, so you would know when someone's wanting to open one next door. So yeah, they're registered by the state. Okay. That's the only question I have. Okay. No further questions? Uh, all right. Uh, as this is a public hearing, we will open the meeting to public comment. And if you're on the Zoom feature, please raise your hand if you wish to comment on this item before us. Stacy, we have any? We have no hands. Okay. Nobody waved at us. Uh, so we will close the public meeting at 719 and commissioner discussion well I'll be the first one to say it that I completely disagree with it if we're gonna have if we're gonna have use by uh, 
use by right. I think it needs to be use by right, not use by right for one person and use by special condition for somebody else. So I, I, I don't know how we get past this because what you've just explained to me is we almost have to follow state statute, but I have a, I have a huge issue with one person gets something, but the next person has to ask special permission on the exact same situation. So I'm not for this, and I don't know if it, if it can be rectified in a different way. Is it just really about parking and traffic? Is that really what it comes down to? So that, that's what the state statute allows us to look at. You know, I kind of agree with Kim, but I think because they're t right next to each other, I think the traffic and uh, parking has to be monitored or checked so that it doesn't create a problem in the, in the neighborhood. So I think it's really just a matter of, of uh, housekeeping and complying with the new state statute for now. Other comments? Position. I was going to say, I'm falling on the side of, of Kim with this one, that it, it, it is kind of an unfair ruling to have, uh, you know, first in, good for you, second in, you've got more hoops to jump through. Um, but I also understand, you know, being in compliance with, this, with the state statute, even if I disagree with that statute. So I believe I'm against this one. Um, my, my comment is a simple one. We follow the state statute because that's what they're there for. And if the 17 homes are there now, it's very highly doubtful that there'll be applications for two, unless it happens to be the same person applying and having two homes that happen to be next to each other. But I don't see that being used. So I'm in favor. Well, I'm in favor of it as well. I, 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 I certainly see the the rationale that it, 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 it's a state law and we, we just, we can't continue to pick and choose which laws we're gonna follow. And uh, it just seems like it, the, the way to change it, if we needed to, would be to go to the legislature and ask for a change or petition for a change or something like that. You just don't say, well, we're not gonna follow it because we don't like it. So I'm in favor of this ordinance. Do we have a motion? I move to I move the Planning Commission recommend Town Council approve an ordinance to amend the Park Municipal Code regarding the family child care homes and large family child care homes. I'll second. Been moved by Eliana, seconded by Rich, that Planning Commission recommend Town Council approve an ordinance to amend the Park Municipal Code regarding family child care homes and large family child care homes. And I'll call the question. Kim? Uh, nay. Uh, Eliana? Aye. Uh, Nick? Aye. Uh, Rich? Aye. Roxy? Nay. And the chair is yes. Uh, it passes four to two. All right. Any staff items, Bryce? Uh, no, sir, there are not. All right, do we have a motion to adjourn? Our motion, we say good night. And we adjourn the meeting. I'll I'll second. Second. It's uh, <laughs> been moved by Eliana, seconded by Nick, Nick that uh, we adjourn the meeting at 7.23. So adjourned. All right, I guess we have to vote. Sorry. Kim? Aye. Eliana? Aye. Uh, Nick? Aye. Uh, Rich? Aye. Roxy? Aye. Chair is aye. If Eric was here, he'd want to stay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it passes unanimously. Mm -mm.